What is going on, people of the YouTube? It is I, the Warlock here, and I am making this just making this video because it's the aftermath of WrestleMania 34. Um, yeah, so I just have my uh, thoughts and reactions on it. You know, just to let you guys know what I thought of the matches. Uh, two of them I didn't get a chance to see. Um, I wrote a couple of them down in my little notebook here. Cause I'm not professional. I can't memorize my my lines and notes and whatnot. So I, you know, I got everything written down just to, you know, help me out throughout my video. Uh, what are we gonna do? Let's see. What do we have here? Uh, first up, we're gonna talk about the uh, Andre the Giant Battle Royale. Uh, my thoughts on the match, cause I did see that. Um, I saw it live actually because they got it live on YouTube. All, all the opening stuff, both Battle Royales and the Cruiserweights, I got that. Um, I watched that live because they upload, they, they go live on YouTube. Couldn't watch the WrestleMania though because I didn't have the subscription, so I just waited until somebody posted it on YouTube because people do that. Um, I got one channel I watched it on. I'll leave a link in the description down for me was my finger right there yeah you can't see my hand right right in the description below basically um what was i talking about oh yeah the andre the giant battle royale uh my thoughts on it was was okay um it was uh i don't know i mean basically what i did was i I basically had it open, and because I was watching on my on my old man's on my old man's computer, and I had let's see, I had the live open, and I had Facebook open, and I said, okay, this is a bit too chaotic. I can't follow what's going on, so I decided to uh, just you know go through Facebook, and then I was like, ah, if I can, I'll skip through some of this stuff. Um, towards the end, though, I did like the end. We had a uh, Woken Mad Hardy with uh, Baron Corbin and Mojo Rally. Um, you had the two gain up on Woken Mad Hardy. You're thinking, oh, they're going to just, you know, screw over Mad Hardy like WWE always does. But you see, like, that little flickering of light, the spooky shit, and then Bray Wyatt appears, and you're thinking, ah, oh, shit, not this again. Uh, and surprisingly, we have, we had a Bray Wyatt, or what I'm gonna call him the Woken Wyatt. Um, he, I'm trying to remember who did he get first, so that's why he got Mojo and his sister Abigail allowing Matt Hardy to eliminate him. He tried to get Baron Corbin, Baron Corbin ended Dazum, which allowed Matt Hardy to eliminate, and Matt Hardy took the win for the Battle Royale. And as if you saw last night, well not last night, but Monday Night Raw, uh, Bray Wyatt and Jeff not Jeff, Matt Hardy are now officially a tag team. They are the Woken Warriors with an S. Cause I I'm thinking this is like a Woken Bray or Woken Wyatt. He's, he he he's part of the Woken team now. But yeah, with Andre the Giant Battle Royale, I my my thoughts on that was it it was a bit too mushed, crowded I was. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Royals. The Royal Rumbles I like because they don't get as crowded. But stuff like the Andre the Giant, eh, it gets too crowded in the beginning. Towards the end, you you, you know that that's a real money maker. That's when you want to pay attention, right there. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't have any predictions, by the way, for the two Royals. So I I didn't get nothing wrong. Didn't get nothing right because I I didn't know who was gonna win. I didn't. I didn't guess about that. Uh, speaking of which, we had the women's battle royale. I kind of, I definitely liked the end of this. Uh, the beginning was quite funny because they had Carmella and poor Dana Brooks. They tag teamed up and eliminated both of them. I felt bad. I mean, come on now, come on. I mean, Dana Brooks. I get Carmella, but why you gotta get Dana Brooks out? Ugh. Let's see what else happened. Oh, and then towards the end, where we had the looked like it was just Sasha and Bailey, and you see uh, Bailey go to reach for Sasha's hand for a handshake, and then quickly 
switch the attitude, grabs her, throws her over the rope. Everyone's thinking, I I thought Bailey won too. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, everyone's all celebrating. And then you find out Naomi's still in because she went through the middle rope. And that's one thing that bothers me. See, the rules of Royal Royal Rumble is if you go over the top rope, you don't get eliminated. Now, how come in the previous Men's Royal Rumble, you don't see that happen anymore? Especially in the newer generation, I don't see a lot of the men's superstars just go under the ropes. And just, you know, wait until, like, it's, you know, everyone eliminates themselves. You know what I mean? Anywho, though, uh, Bailey thought she won. Turns out Naomi was still in. Uh, what happened? Bailey went to try and get her. Naomi had her with a rear view, eliminated her, and then bam, Naomi is your first ever Grimmins Royale winner. Like I said, the Battle Royales, I didn't do any predictions on that because I wasn't thinking at the time I made my prediction video. I did, however, make a uh, prediction for the Cruiserweight title match. And unlike a certain famous uh, ups and downs guy, uh, this one guy I watched called Simon of Walt Culture. Apparently, he didn't. He doesn't like the cruiserweights, and he gave the segment a down. But I'm thinking that the cruiserweight title match it deserves an up. Why? Here's why. That was my horrible impression of him. I don't mean to. I, I don't. I didn't mean to do that. I like Simon. Uh, Simon Miller, he's a great dude, ups and downs, check him out on Walt Culture, I'll put a link down in the description below, uh, but yeah, uh, so basically with the Cruiserweights, I did make a prediction on this, my prediction was right, because t towards the end, you had Cedric, Cedric Alexander pick up the Cruiserweight title win, um, but in my opinion, this title match, it shows what 205 Live is, and what it's going to be, especially under this new management. It's, I mean, the title match was brilliant, it was well done. Uh, both uh, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander, they they both showed what, what they can do. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that was one of the things I liked about it. Um, well, that's not one of the things. One of the things was just the agility, the reflexes, strength, speed, and just all the high-flying skills that both of these superstars had they basically they gave it their all especially with Mustafa Ali trying to hit his finisher for the second time and Cedric Alexander barely getting out the way and picks up the win with the lumbar support or the lumbar check with the easy one two three and Cedric wins that that, that was a nice match that was nice I, I, I did like the cruiserweights best match out of, out of them all that, that was my favorite, the Cruiserweight. Uh, next up, there was the Triple Threat match. Uh, my prediction was The Miz was going to retain. I was sadly mistaken. Um, they, two, the two students, well not two, but all three of them, they did do their best. Especially uh, Seth and, I don't know why I almost fused Seth and Finn's name. But Seth and Finn, they, they put it there all. A couple close calls where we had a... Uh, what was it? Who had him in the submission? Miz, that's right. The Miz had Finn in the figure four submission, but I'm trying to remember what it was. It was Seth that uh, had the frog flash to break up the submission. Uh, in the end, though, it was the curve stomp to Finn and Miz that had Seth pick up the win. One, two, three. New Intercontinental Champion. And boy, was I wrong with that prediction. There was, there was a couple other I was very wrong for. Uh, let's see, next up we have the Charlotte vs. Oscar title vs. street match. Uh, this one I was... When I saw it the following Monday, because I saw the WrestleMania on Monday, like I said, I, I'm i not subscribed to uh, WrestleMania, well, not, uh, the, the WWE Network, um, so I saw it on the YouTube. Um, I, I keep saying um a lot. I don't know why. I do that in most of my videos. But with that match, I was kind of, you know, disappointed. But then again, it was a good match. Charlotte and Oscar were great competitors, great superstars. It was basically one counter after another. 
one reversal after another. We had, and this was never uh, done before as far as I know, Oscar reversed, yeah, reversed Charlotte's moonsault into a, some kind of submission, which that was very, it was like a Venus flytrap submission, she just <laughs> inhaled her. Uh, we did, I did notice Oscar tried to lock in the Oscar lock a couple times, but all it took was Charlotte with the figure four branched into the figure eight with one arm. And surely but quickly but surely, yeah, surely but quickly, however the saying goes, Oscar surprisingly taps out pretty fast. And we have Charlotte retaining her title and breaking Oscar's unbeatable streak. And for those of you who are not keeping count at home, we have the streak at 261 to 1. So she has 261 wins and one defeat. Um, now I don't know what they're going to do with her now. Um, I'm thinking do not bury Oscar after this defeat because there are plenty of superstars that lost their streak and then WWE just swept them on the rug and just they, they, they just stopped treating them like what they were like Undertaker, Goldberg. I, I think they can do a lot more with Oscar. Like may, maybe continue the streak going like even though she lost, let this be the only loss she has until, you know, yeah, let her boost up her wins more, if, if you know what I mean. <sighs> what else did I have over here? No, no, I think that was it. I think that was it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that was it. Uh, next up, we have the Fatal 4-Way for the U.S. title, which was Rusev, Jenna Mahal, Randy Orton and Bobby Roode. Now, like my buddy Ron from Ron Rates, I do agree because I I follow SmackDown. It's one of out of SmackDown and Raw. SmackDown's my all-time favorite, and there wasn't that much build with the U.S. title. Like, sure, they had some thing between Bobby and Randy Orton. Gender got somehow thrown in there. Then Rusev, and it was just. I don't know. I, I didn't get too into it. I mean, the only reason I got into it is because, you know, Randy Orton and Rusev Day. But other than that, uh, who was it? Gender won with the Coloss after reverse, or not reverse, encountering out of the accolade, giving Rusev the Coloss thanks to the Sings brothers, because that's, that's how Rusev, not Rusev, that's how Gender wins. <sighs> Anywho, but yeah, so gender's your new U.S. champion. Huh, Lord have mercy on my soul. Alright, what's next here? We got, oh yeah, the Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey. Uh, this match I did like um, when I saw it on uh, the one person's channel. I thought it was extremely well, uh, even though for the old age... Kurt Angle and Triple H can still wrestle. Um, I did like the uh, little push they gave for Gonda with, you know, she was getting all amped up, all amped up because Stephanie McMahon was doing all her basic heel stuff, getting some cheap shots in on Kurt. Why did I say Kirk? It's Kurt. Wow, I, apparently Kurt Angle is now captain of the Enterprise. No, I got some cheap shot in on uh, Kurt. Yeah, Kurt uh, Angle's. Uh, managed to get some cheap shot on Ronda, and then when there was the legal tag, we had, uh, I lost my chain of thought there, I'm sorry guys, uh, we had Ronda just go to house on Stephanie McMahon, Stephanie doing some, some punches of her own, but you know, all in all, Ronda Rousey was just an absolute beast, even laying waste to Triple H, putting both Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in a on bar. Uh, one thing I did like, we had, a. Uh, Stephanie and Amba and Triple H in an ankle lock. That one, I, 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 I like seeing that. But all in all, Ronda Rousey took the win by, as she promised, nearly snapping off Stephanie McMahon's arm off. Tapping to the Amba and having Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle win the match and Ronda's first debut as a victory. 
do, 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 and then after that, which, oh, by the way, that, that was my prediction, too, in case you didn't know, my last video, I did, I did vote on Kurt and Onda. Now, on to the SmackDown titles, we have the New Day versus the Usos versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, my predictions were the Bludgeon Brothers were going to take it, because WWE is, you know, they're, they're pushing them to be this unbeatable team, and they were. Uh, the Usos and New Day did give it their all, but we had the Bludgeon Brothers come out on top. And I was very happy because, I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way. Because, you know, the Bludgeon Brothers, they're, they're, they're basically this unstoppable force. Uh, the Usos, out of the three of them, the Usos were my number two pick. But all in all, I'm glad Bludgeon Brothers won. They're, new, they're your new SmackDown champions. And then next up, we had the, you know, the segment with, uh, what was it? The referee telling John Cena he's on The Undertaker. And this was after the Charlotte Oscar match. Oh, I lost train of thought again. Thank goodness I didn't say, um, uh, John Cena rushed, John Cena rushed to the back, you know, just to get ready. His music hit. Uh, he went to the ring, a grading for The Undertaker. And said we got Elias. John Cena's bummed out. Went back to the audience. Elias did his usual, you know, heel crap singing about, uh, not singing, but singing slash dissing about John Cena and the audience. John Cena had enough of the shit, and he just he he took his anger out on Elias. I mean, poor Elias. And then just when you thought it was done like that, John Cena got out of the ring. All of a sudden, light goes out. You see. The Undertaker's attire, middle of the ring, where he left it, lightning hits it, or the pose of lightning, what's my hand, lightning hits it, quotations, and then light goes out again, gong, yeah, you know, the gongs hit, and then there he is, ba bam Undertaker, the dead man comes, and we have a match, which lasted, what was it? Two, two to three minutes, which was pretty good because John Cena and Undertaker are both, they're like in their 50s, so long matches, they, I, I, I don't think, they, don't give the Undertaker a long match, uh, but short, at it, short as it is, it was enough to please the crowd, I mean, like, again, like my buddy Ron said, just having the Undertaker there, that was the dessert, the match was the icing, and then the Undertaker's victory was cherry on top. Oh, I, I liked it. We had all those classical moves, the, the big boot, snake eyes, choke slam, his tombstone, and then the way that he pins him with, you know, just putting his hands on the chest. Oh, man. And then his traditional uh, victory knee. Yeah, his victory knee that he does, that, that was nice, too. And then he did that... Uh, Basically, the repeat of last WrestleMania, after he won, he exited the ring, walked up the ramp, put his hands up to the heavens, and then just descended back into darkness. Yep, yeah, but all in all, I did like that Undertaker match. It was flipping awesome. It, it was flipping awesome. Um, that wasn't a prediction, because I wasn't thinking they were going to put Undertaker on there, so I didn't predict that match. Uh, next up, we had the Shane and Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, my predictions was right. Uh, Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan did pick up the win. Uh, the match, all in all, it was... I don't want to say pretty good. I don't want to say great. I mean, it was pretty good. I did like it. Um, there was the, the, you know, not traditional, I didn't mean to say traditional, there's another word for it, but typical. The typical Kevin and Sami Zayn attacking Shane and Daniel from behind. Uh, Daniel caught ringside in a stretcher, making you look like, oh my god, Daniel's injured. Leaving Shane McMahon to do his best to, you know, hold off Kevin and Shane, but, well, Kevin and Shane, Kevin and Sammy, but... The numbers were against him. Shane nearly lost, but surprisingly, Daniel came back in the ring. And we had just... Like I said, it, it wasn't great. It was not okay. It was very good. Very good, almost great match. Uh, Daniel Bryan got the win by 
trapping uh, Sami Zayn in the yes lock. And, you know, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan taking the win. Uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, fired from SmackDown. And Monday Night Raw, if you saw, they tried to, I think, what was it, make a contract with uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I'll have to make another video about that. But yeah, all in all, match was pretty good. I liked it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. After that was a match I was looking forward to, which was Alexa Blitz, 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 how do you say her name, versus Nia Jax. Uh, this one I liked, uh, basically it shows Nia Jax as this unstoppable, irresistible force. Uh, she laid laid waste to Mickey ja Nikki James, you know, because if she didn't, there was going to be an interference. And then she just basically decimated Alexa until Alexa got some cheap shots in, I mean, She's a heel. She's supposed to get some cheap shots. But yeah. So. During the cheap shots that Alexa were making. I mean. If she even got in a, a cheap shot on um, Naya's leg. Uh, she did some trash talking to Naya. But. Her trash talking backfired. And just. Naya Jax delivered a menacing Samoa Joe. Not. Wow. Well, Samoa Joe. <laughs> yep. She delivered Samoa Joe. Bam, right on Alexa. No, I'm just kidding. She delivered a Samoan drop off the second rope. One, two, three. Nia Jax, your new women's Raw champion. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. Um, I didn't see the full match. I saw clips of it. Uh, that match, um, like the others agree, it was an okay match. Uh, and th there were some good moments in it. Uh, the one that I liked was when Nakamura tried to go in with one of his knee strikes and AJ countered with a Styles Clash for a victory win uh, but most importantly the ending was what drew me in because at the ending you're thinking oh Nakamura you know a good sport it's gonna you know get on one knee give him the belt like here you go you earn this what do we get if we get a goddamn heel turn kapa lower belt a King Shasha as, what was it, AJ rolls out of the ring, Nakamura exit out the ring, delivering one more King Shasha, and then leaving. I mean, for me, I, I do like this because what's going to happen now with Nakamura's heel turn? Uh, I, I don't know, this, this, this is a feud. This is the feud I, I, would, like, I, I, I would like to see. But yeah, on to the main universal event, which I, oh, I was, I was dead wrong. I was dead wrong. I apologize for saying it was a spoiler. I thought Roman Reigns was going to win, uh, but yeah, you guys know Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I haven't, I didn't see the match. I didn't even see clips of it, so I can't judge it. So I can't say if it was good, bad, pretty good, okay. Um, all I know is Roman Reigns took about six F5s before, you know, the one, two, three count, and Brock retains his title. Uh, there was a time where Brock busted open Roman Reigns pretty, pretty, pretty good. It, it was pretty darn bloody. But, yeah, Brock Lesnar retains his title, and I'm pretty sure in that 50-man Royal Rumble, uh, what is it, that pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia, I'm pretty sure in that cage match, that's going to be where Brock loses the title to Roman. But yeah, guys, uh, Brock Lesnar retains his title until Saudi Arabia. I'm, I'm thinking that's when he's going to lose it. Oof. Oof, that was a flash. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, actually, I do like the flash because you can see me better. Uh, but anywho, guys, that is my Aftermath Wrestlemania predictions. Uh, give me one moment, hold on, because I have a little poster board above me where I am going to, you know, put my grade of my predictions. So, hold on, let me pause my video. And there you go, guys. See, there's my little prediction scale list thing. So I got 5 out of 12. 
So I got 5 out of 12 of those WrestleMania moments, right? Um, I, I figured for every... Wow, I'm sorry, I keep it with the camera. I figured, I figured for every prediction video I do, I'll make my little grade sheet up here. And, you know, just, you know, let you guys know. I'm going to turn that flash off because that is hurting my darn eyes. Uh, hold on. There we go. Uh, what was I? But, yeah. So, every prediction I do from now on, I'll probably put, like, my grade of what I got right and wrong up on the board. We'll call that my prediction list scale. My predictions prediction scale list. And basically to show you guys, you know, I don't know, just my grade of what I got right, you know, in my prediction. Today, I did pretty bad. I so let's be honest, I only got five right. Two of them I didn't even two of them I didn't even guess. So yeah, that's that's a failing grade for me. It's probably like a D. Yeah, I think that's like a D or an F. Oh uh, Well if you guys like this, um I have another video idea where I am going to what was it? I'm going to probably make a video posting how I would have booked WrestleMania 34 because, let's face it, Sunday's WrestleMania was, wasn't great, it wasn't bad, it was decent, it was good, it was pretty good, it had some surprise moments, uh, what was I saying? I don't know why I snapped, but yeah, so, I'll I'm gonna be planning on making a video of how I would have booked WrestleMania 34 because I'm a wise ass. <laughs> but anywho, guys, I hope you like this video. I am the Supreme Warlock, and I'm signing out. Peace. Almost forgot to mention. So, uh, one of the other matches I did not predict was the Braun Strowman mystery partner versus the Bar tag team match. Uh, I was, the, my prediction was right about that, but not in the right way. Like, I predicted Strowman was going to win, I just didn't guess his partner right. Um, what I mean by that is, you're thinking, you know, oh, WWE Superstar's gonna return. Big cast, Samoa Joe, Rey Mysterio, Jeff Hardy. Nope, what do we get? We get Nicholas. I know you're thinking. Who the fuck is Nicholas? Brandon, what Warlock? Why are you cursing in your videos? Is he returning? Debuting? Nope. He's just a random fan. A kid. That Strowman picked in the audience. One, two, three. That's your new rock team. Yeah, Raw Tag Team Champ. So, yeah, guys. Uh, that That's pretty mind-blowing right there. I forgot to put down the score list. So, that is a 6 out of 12, which makes it 50%. So, that's... that That's a D. That's, that's not even a D. That's an F. I still have an F. I failed. But, yeah, guys. So, stay tuned for my next video. Um, I will be posting how I would have booked WrestleMania 34. Until then, guys, I'm the Warlock, and now I'm signing out. Peace.